Hey what's up guys, my name is The Cherno, welcome back to another Hazel devlog. So last time we talked about shadows and you guys were totally into that, so I thought that I would make a bit of a follow-up video and in fact it's probably going to be a bunch of follow-up videos because there's just so much, so much stuff to talk about when it comes to shadows and the way I implemented them and just lighting in general in a game engine. I mean it's one of the most fundamental things in computer graphics ever. This is all obviously work in progress, everything that I show here during the devlogs is very much subject to change, however I also have a bit of a habit of not wanting to show too much before it's like before I'm happy with it which is something that I'm trying to avoid because this should be like a journal and you know I shouldn't just be showing you know great looking stuff when it's done so the point is I'm gonna try and do a devlog probably at least once a week just to show you exactly the state of things as long as I'm working on it. I'm not always working on Hazel Dev like week to week to week because there's a lot of other, other projects and you know the game engine series and C++ stuff and various other like code review videos that I might be doing but when I am working on Hazel Dev I'm just gonna make a bit of a pledge here to just try and show you guys a lot more. I also had this idea of looking through the comments of the last devlog video in every devlog video that I make. So in other words we're just gonna open up the comments from the last episode. And I'm gonna try and answer some of your questions. Okay, so of course the cat, Alifka, was the primary focus of the last um, episode. I had no idea that a kitten would be so distracting. I'm kidding, of course I did. Atlichne email Ukoshki means great name for a cat. Alifka Gwani email. Everyone everyone loves the anyway, we'll skip past the Russian comments because I know not not everyone here speaks Russian. But I'll just say that everyone is really happy with the name Alifka, which is really cool. My wife actually picked that name. It wasn't me. It was technically this Kitten was like a gift to her and she she picked the name Alivka. I really like it as well. So that's that's the story of that. So I can't really take credit for that. That's all her. Now I have to do intros with a kitty every time. I already failed that. Let's try and find some like shadow maybe related <laughs> related comments. Hey Chano, someone interested in getting into audio programming wondering to what extent Hazel will have an audio engine. So Hazel, the plan for Hazel is I actually already have a repository called Hazel Audio. I, I played a little bit with audio um, earlier on in the year. The plan is definitely to have pretty extensive audio in Hazel. I myself love audio, I'm a musician as well. So I definitely wanna have Hazel will be quite capable of audio. Don't don't think that I'm forgetting about audio completely. But obviously, you know, when it comes to a game engine, audio is like one of those things that you develop towards the end, probably. You make sure the rendering is set up, the scripting, everything, so that you can actually make a game, and then audio kind of comes at the end. So it is coming, it's just that my priority is a kind of a little bit in different places. God, now I know why you were gone for this long. You must have been working on this. See, that's kind of what I mean. I should have probably made more videos of my progress instead of just disappearing for two weeks, but sometimes the software engineer side of me wants to just, you know, back when I worked at EA and I didn't really, you know, make as many videos as I do now that I'm like a full-time YouTuber slash I don't know, Hazel developer. Back then, it was kind of nice to just, you know, come to work, sit down at your desk and not have to worry about like, oh, I should record a video for this or I should show this off, you know? Just coming to work, putting some music in and programming is just a little bit of a feeling that I've been missing lately. So I kind of forgot about YouTube and then just, I was like, okay, that's it. I'm a software engineer working on Shadows. Let's get this stuff done. And it was really fun. But in retrospect, I do kind of miss sharing that journey with you guys, as well as just having like a bit of a journal of of the progress that I'm making when I'm working on such a feature. So no guarantees for the future, but as I said, I am definitely gonna try and share more with you guys. Hi Chano, do you think it would be possible to post your live streams for those who can't join due to time differences? So yeah, live streams get posted for all patrons. Five dollars a month, you get access to the whole backlog of all the live streams that I've ever done on Twitch just as unlisted YouTube links that you can check out whenever you like. I really enjoy these more rambling videos. Well, thank you. I like the devlog format very much. Yeah, I I'm really happy that you guys really liked the devlog and let me know what you think of me reading the comments and stuff. I think it's just maybe a little bit more interactive when you guys can leave a comment and you can actually see me reply to it and like talk about it instead of just not never knowing if I see it or not. <laughs> Are you on USA? No, I'm from Melbourne, Australia. Where can I get the Hazel Game Engine demo thing? Patreon.com slash the Cherno. Hello, Cherno, set up playing Need for Speed No Limits game from 2018. See your name in the credits. Okay, I'm a really good graphics for Android and get, yeah, I think Need for Speed No Limits has really good graphics, especially back in 2015 when we launched it. It had, I think, some of the best mobile graphics of any game out there. So I definitely have to say that I'm proud of proud of the whole team for that. So today, the, the main thing that I wanted to talk about was some of the improvements that I've made to the shadows in the last few days, over the weekend, really. 
Usually I try not to work on weekends, but these shadows were just keeping me up at night. I just wanted to wrap it up and actually have them be more or less finished. And I think they're at that stage now. The main concerns that I had, and I think I remember seeing a comment that I, I didn't find today, but um, were in regards to how the, how the shadows actually work for a large scene. Because whilst I did talk about the fact that I have made them work for a large scene, I really didn't show that off in the devlog. I mean, ultimately I just, I just did show them kind of centered on a little model in the, in the middle of the world. And that maybe wasn't a good demonstration of it. So right now I do want to show them in a, just a little bit more of a, because they're serious kind of world context. There were a few bugs with the shadows in the last devlog that I have ironed out as well. So as far as I can tell right now, they are fairly stable as far as shadows or shadow mapping goes. There are obviously areas in which you might have to like increase the bias or change change like the near and far plane of the, of the view frostums for the shadow map and various other settings because that's what shadow maps are like. There's just a lot of tweaking that usually needs to be done to get them to look right. I think I'm going to make a video in the future talking a little bit about how I implemented some of the nicer features such as the fading between cascades and where I even took the inspiration from that and practically how it was achieved. Let me know if you guys are interested in that. I think I'll make that later on in the week potentially. But ultimately let's just dive in and take a look at a brand new scene in Hazel and how we can set up lighting and shadows and I'll demonstrate it working on kind of a larger scale. Okay so this was kind of the standard scene that I think I showed last time. I have been playing with uh, like the the whole exposure and all the kind of intensities around quite a lot as well. So you see that the sky that has like, you know, an intensity that you can set, um, which can be useful because some of these are just really, really bright. Like you can see this one is hugely bright as well. Um, but this is kind of a, a base scene. So the way that I started testing these shadows uh, in like in the context of a larger world is I added a mesh that was essentially just like a, a large plane. So if I go back to these meshes and select, I think it's in models actually, um, and I just create a large plane like this, moving it downwards a little bit. You should obviously see a shadow on it. I think at that point due to a bug, I didn't even see a shadow on the plane. And so I had to um, iron out some issues with that as well. But if we just make this a little bit bigger in general, it's quite a lot bigger um, and maybe change the shadow fade distance to be like 450 or something a little bit higher, then uh, you know what we should be able to do basically is we should be able to duplicate this and just move it all around, right? So I'll just duplicate it a few times. And obviously the idea is, I'm just pressing Control D to duplicate it. We should see shadows everywhere, right? And I can duplicate uh, maybe this as well and move it somewhere. Um, where is it? Yeah, just like that. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much. I mean, you don't really need to do this too much, but the point is you should be able to see those shadows and you can see that we can see the shadows and really no matter where we are in the world. Now they will fade out, right? Because we have set a, ma uh, a maximum shadow distance, um, like a, yeah, a maximum shadow distance. Um, and you can see there are some issues coming in with huge frustums like this. So that you can actually fix this by going into uh, the scene renderer and then tweaking the shadows, as I mentioned. So maybe like minus 150, 150 is a little bit, uh, a little bit of a better kind of near far plane. You can see that wherever we are, right, if we come in close here, we should be able to see really nice looking shadows really anywhere in the world. Um, and so this is like a, a good way to test it because at this point we're about, I mean, that's not that far, we're 200 meters away from the origin of the world. But the point is it doesn't matter where we are because the camera, the, the shadow mapping moves with the camera, obviously. You know, if I zoom in somewhere else, then obviously we're going to see, uh, you know, high resolution shadows wherever the camera is. So that in general is obviously a really good way to just test this and see in general how, how shadows work in the context of a larger world without necessarily having like this huge world to explore because unfortunately that's one of the things that I haven't really created yet in Hazel. I should create some kind of like, like a racing track or some kind of massive environment that we can actually walk around in. Um, and speaking of which, an environment that we can walk around in, we do have a little bit of a sponsor scene that I will show as well. So sponsor, of course, is, is um, quite a popular 3D model that people use with scenes. This is me loading the sponsor scene. This is what it looks like. Um, we can come in here, and this is quite a large uh, scene here. I mean, this actually scaled down to a tenth of the size, but um, it's, a, it's a pity we can't really measure it. But I think, do we have the grid in the middle? No, not really. Um, yeah, it would be nice to measure it. Uh, I guess what I can do now is just maybe add like a little cube because our cube, I believe, is a one meter cube, one by one by one meter. So if I just add a 
one meter cube here. So this is one meter. So actually it looks like Spons is even larger than it should be. Um, let me, uh, can't even select it. Where's my cube? So you can see that, um, oh, I just scaled it up, which defeats the whole purpose, but this is one meter. So this is clearly not to scale. Spons is a lot larger than it should be because I think one meter is probably, you know, more like th that size or something. Um, but anyway, so, uh, so this is quite a large scene is my point. And you can see obviously some of the cascades here and this light's actually quite soft. Maybe I'll make it a little bit harder here. But this is like a demonstration, I guess, of shadows in a much larger scene. And I can come over here uh, to the directional light and maybe like maneuver it. And there we go, that looks kind of nice. And then we can play with the lighting to make it look a little bit, maybe more like a night scene that might look nice. So if we come over here to the directional light, in fact, let's just reduce the skylight's contribution. So if we make it, we can make it look really dramatic if we just uh, basically cut out a lot of the skylight. I mean, if we completely cut it out, then obviously we'll have just completely black ambience here. But if I um, add like, you know, as we start to add a little bit more of it, it can start to look a lot nicer. And then in fact, with this directional light, we can also play with that intensity to light it however we like. So I might, I might give it quite a high, um, higher intensity, maybe like 1.5 here. And then let's set the color to be something more like, maybe like a bluish kind of tint, right? So now we're starting to look like moonlight um, and it could even look like a bit of a night scene. We can also play with our camera's exposure a little bit if it's looking at it a little bit too dark. I did also spend some time optimizing these soft shadows. So this is still the soft shadow rendering. You can see we're about eight milliseconds per frame, which isn't like amazing, but it's also not bad when you consider the fact that obviously this resolution here is is quite high. It's it's higher than full HD because my monitor is quite is quite HD, 2560 by 1440. And I think before my optimizations, this was something like 30 milliseconds and it basically wasn't even hitting 60 FPS. So with some optimization, this has gotten a lot better. There's still quite a lot I could do, but I think for now, this is probably enough. If you guys are interested in seeing some of those optimizations and also let me know and I can maybe make a video about some of those. But yeah, that's basically our sponsor scene. Looks pretty good. I'm still working on some other effects that'll make this look even nicer, such as bloom and depth of field as well. Which, isn't, which I'm not quite ready to show off just yet. Also, I think there's like some issues here with alpha rendering, but overall I'm pretty happy with this. And with some 3D physics, it's going to be really nice to see the scene as, as like a place that you can basically walk in and interact with in play mode. So that's something that I'm definitely looking forward to doing pretty soon as well. And we've also got this scene, which is uh, basically like a little game that I made. I think I've shown this before, but it's a, a little bit of a game demonstrating some 2D physics and some scripting behaviors because like we have have this player entity that's all like fully scripted and everything. And so this is a good uh, example also showing how the shadows depend on where the camera is in the world and how they kind of move with the camera. Because if we hit play here and we start playing this scene, obviously wherever we are, this shadow will kind of remain here. So if I uh, just move across the world, you can see that wherever we are, it doesn't matter because the shadow map always follows the camera. And here we are. And in fact, if we tweak some of these parameters a little bit, um, so if we go to directional light, and sometimes it's nice to use this gizmo, sometimes it's it's not. Sometimes I prefer using the controls over here, but we can kind of cover a little bit more with this light here, maybe make it look more like this. And then with the skylight, dip it. I mean, this is like, you could spend hours here, honestly. But the point is that you can see we're, we're kind of in shadow here. And as we move uh, across the world, everything should more or less look correct. So there you go, that looks a little bit weird, but I think it's because we're partially being um, obstructed by that. And of course you can tweak this stuff in real time. Uh, it won't save when you when you stop playing the scene, but you can always tweak the stuff in real time in case you're working on getting something looking good. Uh, and it's really nice to see a dynamic scene like this, you know, with a whole bunch of uh, shadows as well. So if I duplicate this a few times so that we have a little bit more physics going on in the world, and I hit play, you can see how these things fall around and, and everything obviously moves with them in terms of the shadows. So that looks pretty cool, I think, as well. So yeah, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, a bit of a deeper look into shadows and hazel in the context of scenes. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button. I've got a few more devlogs planned for shadows, maybe digging into some of the deeper aspects as well as just lighting a scene from scratch. This stuff is gonna be a lot nicer, I think, once we can hook it up with 3D physics, as I mentioned, so that we can actually interact with this world and maybe script some certain things happening. But overall, I really enjoyed working on this stuff and it's really satisfying when it all comes 
comes together and when you can actually, you know, make a nice scene out of it and, you know, have it look nice. There's just there's something about about graphics and rendering that's just super satisfying and as I as I've mentioned before I absolutely love it. If you guys want to check this out for yourselves you can help support Hazel by going to patreon.com slash the channel and you will get access to all of this source code as well as like the backlog of live streams and an amazing community where we talk about this kind of stuff and share knowledge around. So thank you so much to everyone who does help support this would not be here without you guys and from the bottom of my heart thank you. It's really cool for me to see how much we've achieved with Hazel and just the, the journey over the last couple of years has been amazing. I've learned so much, honestly, by working on all this kind of stuff. And it's amazing that we're kind of getting to the point where where people can actually start creating content with this. So huge thank you as always. I could not be more thankful and more grateful. Let me know what you guys thought of this devlog and what you want to see in the future. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.